but it's kind of like your your file that stores all your weights. If we come actually in here to the channel info, you'll see that we uh we have a lot of stuff stored in here, all the skin weights. So um so they're stored in the geometry and changes that you make to it that don't really that don't affect the uh, like the UVs and things like that. Those are all the same kind of changes that you can make to it without affecting the skin weights. So um so in this case, let's go ahead and come back in here. And again, you saw what it's doing here. Um, I'm going to grab this, and I'm just going to pull it down in my scene. And then I'm going to grab both of them. So I have my hand, and I have my other one. And I'm just going to say import data from mesh. So I have a couple of bones in here that are in the arm that I don't need, and I don't want to override any of the stuff that might be stored in this hand that um, that I you know that I don't want to overwrite this in the arm. So I'm just going to come in here and grab these. And I'm going to keep those and get these as well and just remove those. And uh, we'll just say that we want to match by name the rest of them. And we'll say OK. And now you can see that it's totally skin. So what's cool about this is that this is just one hand. You know, I didn't have to load up the skin weights for everything and just because I wanted the hand I didn't destroy the arm and the rest of the body and everything else that I've done so I can keep pieces of skins around and if I'm you know if I've got a skin that, that's uh, that's similar to something I've already done then I can just take that piece that I've already done and attach it and kind of build a new skin character out of that so it's just a way to save a lot of time because you can take this object this skin object here the blue one and um, and I can actually mirror this geometry and copy those weights to a different hand, a hand that you know that's uh, actually physically different. I mean, because uh, because if we mirror the weights, the hand is you know on a different character. It's you know its thumb comes in this direction instead of this direction. So the the model, even though it is a hand, is different, and the weights think of it as being different. So you will need to mirror the geometry to copy it to the other. But uh, but that's also possible. So all of this skinning is uh, is really useful. You don't have to match by name. They don't have the same bone names. You can um, you can map them up individually, or you can uh, if they have prefixes, you can remove those prefixes and map them. So uh, so all that stuff will work as well. So now let's go in here and um, and take a look at uh, some of the other tools, which will be adjusting the geometry and adjusting the um, the animation. So I'm just showing you some, again, some tips and tricks for this. One of the things that's kind of useful is to be able to come in and put a, a turn to mesh or a turn to poly on top of your model, uh, on top of your uh, model, and in front of your skin. So in between the model and the skin, you can come in and um, and put this turn to poly. And what that does is it just turns off your selection. So now I can come into the vertex level of this uh, geometry, and uh, and I can turn on my skin at the top. And if I turn on show end result, now I can see, let's actually go into, let's make sure this is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. And um, we'll go into, actually let's, oh, you know what it is. That's what I meant to do is poly select. So, Let's see it do it. Okay. And there we go. That's what I'm... Mesh select. So mesh select, what, what it does, and as you see, poly select's not the same thing. When you go into mesh select, it's turning off the selection. Now I've got my selection on in here. We'll turn on the show and result. I think actually poly select is, uh, is what I want, but this works too. I didn't have show and result on. And um, and you can see, now I've got my deformation here happening. And I'm in my edit poly level. So if we come in here, I can still see that. And I can still see my geometry. So if I'm working on some twisting here for the arm, let's just say, 
and I want to come in and um, add some extra segments, but I want to see the additions that I'm making. I want to see how they're affecting the skin geometry. I can either edit the modifier, um, edit above the skin modifier, but then my weights are not going to be in there if I'm using envelopes. It's going to interpolate, but it's not going to give me uh, the same thing that I can do if I'm under the stack. So when I'm under the stack, I can come in here and I can see my geometry here. I can come in and make changes and I can see how it's going to affect the skin in a different pose. And I can see them both at the same time without having to do any reference objects or anything like that. Uh, PolySelect, I, I believe, also does work. But um, when you're going in here, this is really useful, especially when you're trying to do uh, muscle deformations and stuff like that on your skin. And if we come around here, you know, just kind of get a look at it. You know. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this, and we're going to talk a little bit about animation. And there's just a few quick shortcuts that I want to show you.